Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here from Lone Fox and you do not know how excited I am to be sitting down and DIYing for you guys today because I really feel like I have not DIYed in a minute. I honestly spent quite some time just redoing my apartment for fall. I actually did two different makeover videos if you guys have not seen them. One in the living and dining room and then one in my bedroom, both fall themed and I love the way that they turned out. But I thought today, why not go ahead and do some cute DIY fall decor for you guys. I've had so many ideas. I just haven't had a moment to sit down and actually create them. I wanted to get your opinions on this filming style. So I've actually filmed one video like this before where I actually kind of talk to you guys and then I have a camera pointing down as well. I would love to know, do you like this style of DIY video or do you prefer the voiceover kind of quicker chops? I'd love to know, leave a comment below. And I'm also so excited to say that today's video is sponsored by Canon. I love working with Canon. I have a Canon camera. I have all Canon products, but today we're focusing on their TS9521C crafting printer. It does and works wonders. It's a crazy printer. I'm actually gonna dive on into a couple of the details of it right now because we need some of the prints that we're using in a couple of seconds for our first project. So let me share with you guys the printer. This pretty printer you see on the shelf here is the Canon TS9521C crafting printer. And the thing I love about this printer is how versatile it truly is. You can use it for any crafting project, whether it be 12 by 12 borderless printing, art prints, really any craft related project, but you can also use this for everyday prints as well, such as photos, school projects, documents, invitations, and much more. Here you can see I'm flipping through some of the built-in printable patterns. And I love these because you could print 12 by 12 borderless, which would have been a game changer during my scrapbook days. Here's some ancient footage I pulled from the vault for you guys. I loved scrapbooking so much and this printer would have been such a game changer and I've recently been using it also as well to print out patterns for phone cases as you guys saw in a last video. I've made gift card holders and also greeting cards as well. We also cannot forget about the five color individual ink system this printer has, the versatile printing, copying, and scanning. You can do so much with this printer. It has a super simple interface as well with a touch screen on the front just to make selections very easy and memory card support so you could print right off of your memory card. I wanted to go ahead and swap out some of the artwork in my apartment and I figured why not print out my own? It is so much cheaper than going to like a print shop or something. So I ended up printing out a couple of artwork pieces on this printer. And this was the first time I printed photos or artwork. And wow, did this exceed my expectations, you guys. The quality of these prints is unmatched. Like this black one here that is so dark, I really thought it was gonna be like a low quality, not as pigmented as the actual image was, but these were all super pigmented. They had no streaks, no lines, and the overall print quality was just it was really, really nice for an art print. A lot of you might have seen that these vintage style frames around my apartment, and a lot of them have been empty just hanging on the wall, but I ended up adding artwork to them, and wow, the frame enhances the art, and the art enhances the frame. I love the way that these prints turned out. And if printing these art prints out did not entice you enough, then click the link in my description box below to find out more information on the Canon PIXMA TS9521C crafting printer. It is truly a game changer. So as you guys saw, I printed some incredible artwork on that printer. The printing quality is insane. Like this looks like it was fully printed at a print shop. I also printed this one and I get questions all the time about where I get these frames. And most times you have to find these frames at like a Goodwill or a thrift store. But I thought for our first project, we can go ahead and kind of recreate one of these frames, do a DIY version. So let's dive on in. For the base of our frame, I'm gonna be using an eight by 10 frame here. This is from Target. I've had it for a long time. I've done nothing with it. I think I bought it for a makeover a while back and I didn't end up using it. So I thought, why not use it? It's a perfect size and I feel like I'm a chef right now you guys because you know how like, you watch cooking shows and they like cut something up and then you have to refrigerate it for an hour and bring it back. Well you guys, I'm doing the same thing. So I already did my little resin molds because they take a while so they're already done. Essentially I purchased a couple of silicone molds on Amazon. I'll link the ones I got below for you guys. And then I mixed together some of this resin here. It's the one I always use, the crafters resin. And I went ahead, I mixed it up and I poured it into the molds, let it cure overnight. And that is basically where we are at the moment. I'm gonna demold our little resin kind of filigree shape and look how cool that is. And I've done these before in clay, but I swear guys, the clay ones break really easily, so I suggest using resin. These are pieces, and I know I want my frame orientation to be vertical like this. Basically, I wanna also do some hot glue gun dots like on the inside of the frame and maybe on the outside as well to kind of create this border around here. I kind of like this layout that I have going on here. Now, I know it looks really strange as is, but once we paint the full thing gold, give it some antiquing, it should give us a similar look to one of those other frames, if not even cooler, to be honest. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and use some hot glue to adhere down all of my resin pieces and then we can move on to the next step. Let's go in and do our dots, you guys. I'm just gonna try to make them as even as possible. Just an idea if you wanted them to be more symmetrical, you can also go in and use those like peel and stick pearls and like glue them on so they're very even and symmetrical. You can space them out, but I'm just gonna wing it and do the hot glue. Plus it's cheaper, easier, and I have access to it. So our hot gluing is complete. Now I will say I didn't glue these on perfectly symmetrical, but I'm totally fine with that. There's more room on the right side of the frame as there is on the left side. The filigree kind of butts up here where it doesn't here. Just being fully transparent, I should have probably even did that a little bit more, but I'm not too mad. Let's just say it adds character, you know? So I'm gonna go back in over the top of this once it's dry and actually do one full coat of this acrylic paint here. It's, the color is asphaltum. So we're gonna do a brown coat of paint all, over all of this and then I'm gonna go over it with some rub and buff and gold and hopefully the brown will almost act as like an underlayer to kind of give it a vintage look. So I'm gonna go ahead and dry this down with a heat gun and then we can add our actual gold finish. The product I'm gonna use to make this gold is rub and buff in the color antique gold. I love, love, love using this. It just goes on so easily. It's so opaque. You need one coat and you are good to go. So I'm gonna put down a generous amount of this and to apply this on I'm actually gonna use like a medium sized kind of stippling brush here that has a bit more of a coarser hair to it just because I want to be able to kind of stipple it into a lot of the grooves and also just be able to kind of add the gold where I want and still let some of that brown kind of show through to give it an aged look. So as you guys can see in this corner here the brown that we added on first really just shows through a lot of the cracks and crevices which is why I'm using a coarser brush so I don't get the gold everywhere. I really want to kind of brush it on top and just let it go where it falls but then let the brown or the darker brown color sit below so it kind of gives that antique aged effect. Effect. Picking up a bit more of the product there and we're just going to go over the top just kind of stippling and brushing it on as it needs to be. When I'm telling you guys this frame took me about 10 minutes from start to finish to create, I am not kidding and look how cool that looks. And then I went ahead and printed a new art piece. Look how insane this art piece printed on that Canon printer. It is crazy, you guys. This looks like a legit piece of art. Quality is just crazy. I cannot believe it looks like that. But we're gonna go ahead and pop it in our frame. And I never use glass when I do like the more painted looking pieces. I just think it gives it a more organic look. Oh my gosh, how perfect is this for fall? Are you kidding me? I love the way this frame turned out. It actually turned out better than I thought. second project we're gonna be creating some really cute pumpkin pillows and I've actually seen these on a couple of decor sites this year and they're pretty expensive but my friend Christine from for the home over on Instagram actually did a tutorial on these really cute pumpkin pillows and I'm going to recreate them for you guys so 100% credit to Christine but let's dive in I'm very excited about this so I have two fabrics here this first one's like a really pretty boucle like teddy style fabric and then this fabric here is actually one that I ended up using for my bathroom makeover if you guys remember these were for those curtains that I did so I thought I would create like a smaller one maybe with this fabric and then a larger one with the boucle fabric. What we're gonna wanna do is lay it out on the backside to get an idea. And we're gonna wanna cut out a rectangle shape. So something along the lines of just, you know, like your traditional rectangle. I'd probably say like 24 inches by 12 inches. But let's go ahead and cut out a rectangle shape. And now we have our boucle little rectangle here, which I'm gonna flip over because we're gonna go ahead and just do a running stitch across the top and the bottom. I'm going to grab a needle and just some string. This is cotton string from the dollar store. And I'm going to thread this on. We're gonna go ahead and just do a really loose running stitch, which is basically like an in and out weave, essentially across the backside of our fabric here. And then for both the top and the bottom, you're actually gonna want different strands or different strings cut for those sections when you do the running stitch because we're gonna pull them separately after we sew up the side. Running stitch is done on the top and bottom, but what we're gonna wanna do now is actually flip it over so our right side is up and we're gonna fold this in half, right sides together, and actually sew off this end here, just kind of sewing through this edge. Just because we're using this to actually secure the pumpkin shut, I would say do a little bit of a tighter stitch. And then once you reach the end, you can just go ahead and tie your string off, uh, just how you would finish kind of any seam. And now you guys, we essentially have this nice tube, which we can now invert. We sewed off one of our edges. So now we're gonna wanna close off one end of our pumpkin. So we have our two strands. All you have to do to your two strands is just simply pull them. It's gonna cinch everything together and tie this into a really, really tight knot. This is gonna be the bottom of our pumpkin. 
It's really nice doing this too with a fluffier fabric because a lot of your knots and your stitching is just kind of hidden in the fluff of the fabric. And now we have a pouch. We're gonna go ahead and fill up our pouch with basically just some down alternative polyfill. You can totally recycle old pillows. You could put old clothes in here. A little trick when using polyfill too, I kind of like to shred it before I put it in because sometimes it can be pretty condensed and then we can start stuffing. All right, so here's our little puff of fabric, you guys. This would be such a cute, like, longer lumbar pillow. But we're going to create the sections of the pumpkin now. So what we're going to do to create those is actually use some hemp cording. You're going to want something to kind of contrast your base fabric just a little bit. And I'm going to slip this through a yarn needle here, just so much easier to work with. And so I'm going to just put my needle right through the center of our pumpkin and then kind of push it through the opposite side. Give yourself a good amount to work with. I'm just gonna go right back over and do the same thing. Go right back through the middle section and back up through the top. So I wanna probably add like six of them total. So you're just gonna wanna map out where you want your next one to be, just right by it most likely, and just repeat the process. Once you have your sections done guys, just go ahead and tie off your remaining strands into a nice tight knot. And you guys, this is the base of our little fluffy pumpkin. Next, what we're gonna wanna do though is go ahead and add a stem to the top. So I have these little wood pieces, which honestly are just so easy to just pop right in the top. And I also have this cute little leaf here. This is literally from the dollar store. And we're just gonna adhere these down with a bit of hot glue. Look at our little pumpkin. You can style it with your throw pillows or you can put it on top of like a tabletop. How cute is that, you guys? Like on a coffee table or something? I actually wanna make one more though with the other fabric, a little bit of a smaller version and I'm gonna speed through that one to share it with you guys. But I finished the second pumpkin, you guys, and this one turned out so cute. I will say that the fabric that is more stiff and not fluffy that can kind of hide any mistakes is definitely a bit more challenging to work with. You kind of get this more ruffled, organic look, but honestly, I think it's really a cute look. They're both really cute. Look at these little pumpkins, you guys. So so that is our second project. Moving into our third project, this is a project I have seen floating around Pinterest for years when it comes to fall decor. And it's basically where you take a large leaf, something like this, and you press it into some clay to create like a like little plate. But I'm actually gonna turn mine into a bowl shape. And you guys, my friend Alyssa found me the biggest leaf in the world. It was fallen on the ground. Don't worry, it wasn't picked off of a tree. So we're gonna use this kind of as a template for our bowl. And we're also gonna use some clay here. This is just some Sculpey white clay. Starting off, we're gonna grab some of our clay. I'm not sure how much we're gonna need, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use a generous amount. Whenever you're doing a clay project, you guys, I always suggest starting by warming up the clay first. Whenever I roll out clay, I like to just work on some parchment paper. So I just kind of move, maneuver it in a circle like this, flatten it out as much as I can, kind of almost stretch it at the same time too, just so that you disperse the clay more evenly. And then when you place it on your surface, you can use a rolling pin or whatever you have to roll it to the dimension you want it to be. Our clay has been rolled out and it took me a while to get this rolled out. And we have our large, humongous, beautiful leaf here. And basically what I'm going to do with this leaf is I'm going to be pressing the top of it on top of our clay and kind of getting an indent of the leaf. And that's going to give us our design or pattern. And I kind of maneuvered my clay in a way where this would fit on there. And I'm just gonna start pressing my leaf into the clay and then I'm gonna use my acrylic roller to almost start rolling and indenting the leaf design into our clay. Our leaf is pretty well pressed in the clay. I made sure to go over it with our acrylic roller a few times and it looks nice and flat. Now I'm gonna be using an X-Acto knife to go ahead and just trim out any of the extra clay. So anything that's showing outside of the leaf, we're gonna trim all of that clay off. It is our moment of truth. I'm so nervous, but I think this should have worked. We're gonna pull up our original leaf and hopefully it should have indented some of the design onto our clay. I will say it's not the most perfect imprint, but it's going to work perfectly fine. We can totally turn this into a bowl still. This is just an Ikea bowl, and I'm just gonna go ahead and actually take our leaf off of our parchment paper. We basically want to give it a bowl shape, so we're just gonna pat this kind of around those edges. And I'm going to go pop this into the oven for probably around half of an hour. All right guys, our bowl is out of the oven. I have let this kind of um, cool down for about an hour and a half because it was heated. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. It's very simple. It literally just pops right off. Oh my gosh, you guys, look 
how cool this is. So I think I'm just gonna leave it as is. It has like a unique texture to it as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and seal it. I'm gonna use some Mod Podge hard coat, which is what I always use to seal. The larger the leaf you find, the larger bowl that you can create, but these are really cute. You can also totally do a smaller leaf and create like some trinket trays if you wanted to give them to your friends or something. We have our final project here, which this is the one I was holding off for last because I'm a little nervous because the idea for this project is really just to combine a whole bunch of paints and mediums to create some unique fall themed votive holders. And I'm going to go ahead and use a mixture of different mediums. So let me share them with you guys. This one here is that amber glass spray paint that I ended up using on the olive trees, if you guys remember in my fall videos. And then I have a little bit of a gold bright coat spray paint, which is like a metallic finish. And then I have this forged hammer paint and primer in one burnish amber finish and I'm just gonna use these in coordination with this right here now this is a metal effects rust finish kit and I got this at the craft store basically it's supposed to give you a rusty finish but I thought it would be cool to have like a rusty kind of fall themed warm toned distressed votive holder so I, I laid down some cardboard to protect my surfaces and I'm going to grab my two little glass pieces here I went ahead and I opened all of the windows in my living room um, I know you're not supposed to spray paint indoors however I'm just doing very very light coats of this so I don't I don't think it's gonna be too big of an issue. So I'm gonna start off with this amber glass spray paint and shake that up a little bit. And I'm just gonna start kind of spraying the bottom of this. I wanna leave the top fully clear and almost have it kind of be a gradual effect going down. So that's why I'm spraying more towards the bottom. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit on this one as well. Instantly, those are so much cooler. You already have like these ombre amber glass vessels but we're gonna take it one step further and add a little bit more. I'm gonna let this dry for a minute though. Now that our sea glass spray paint has dried, I'm gonna go in with a bit of that gold spray paint and give just a little bit of gold to this as well. I'd love a bit of shimmer kind of popping through the rust accent we're gonna add afterwards. <gasps> you guys, these are so pretty already. But I wanna go in with our rust accents paint, which where did I put that? Here it is. Okay, so it seems like first we're gonna go in and add our primer. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of loosely apply this, honestly, to more so the bottom of our piece and I kind of want to get like a little bit of a fade towards the top. Kind of going to fade it into what we've already sprayed. All right guys, our primer is dry and these again, like look at the stage that these are already in. We're going to go into our next step here, which is going to be actually adding our oxidizing iron paint. And we're going to add a coat of this. It says to do two coats of it actually over the top. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to brush it up, but I'm going to leave a little bit of that terracotta primer color because it's actually really pretty um, showing. So I'm not going to brush it all the way up to the top. And I'm going to go in with like this stippling brush here, which is kind of like a more coarser brush. And I'm just going to kind of drag right at the top of our line. And that's just going to fade that out a little bit more. Oh, you guys, you know what? A better method for blending this is stippling it like this. It looks way better. Ooh, I'm gonna go back and do that on our other one too. These are dry and this is the rust activator. So we're just gonna go ahead and spray a coat of this. I'm gonna let that sit, nothing is happening yet. It does say as activated surface dries, it takes about 30 to 40 minutes, a real rust finish will appear. So I'm gonna add a second coat in five minutes and then I'm gonna share it with you guys what it looks like in about 45 minutes. It's been about an hour and a half, you guys, and our hurricanes look so cool. I absolutely love this finish on them. How unique is that finish? Totally obsessed with it, but I'm just gonna do one more tiny step to this piece, which is going to be adding just a tiny bit of this burnished amber spray paint to the bottom. I'm just gonna kind of slightly spritz the bottom of it to give it a little bit more of an ombre, like a gradation. This is just gonna give a really cool texture to the bottom because it actually looks like hammered metal. Those are our finished kind of fall themed, just rustic hurricanes. These are perfect for any pillar candle, votive candle, whatever you want. And they're great on top of a mantle. You can use a couple of these on a dining table for Thanksgiving. These are really cool and I love the way that they turned out. And that guys finishes off today's fall DIY decor video. I hope that you guys loved these projects. I didn't want to make them like very in your face fall decor, but I wanted to make them more just pieces that can kind of remind you of the vibes of fall, the color palette of fall textures, just overall cozy elements to add it to your space. So I hope you enjoy these projects. And I also, again, want to thank Canon so much for sponsoring today's video. And if you guys happen to be in the market for a printer, this one is really, really great. It is a Canon TS9521C. I've had this printer for a couple of months and I've used it for absolutely all my printing needs. 
needs. I've done creative printing on it, whether it be large scale patterns, even artwork like that you guys saw at the beginning of the video. And I've also done a lot of my just normal prints as well, such as contracts, paperwork, leases, random things like that. Leases, where did that come from? But I mean, you could print a lease on there too. So I'll link it below if you wanna find out any more information. And I hope that you guys liked today's video. I cannot wait to style these pieces in my apartment because I know I just did a fall makeover, but I could still use some fall elements in the kitchen. That's probably where I'm gonna put everything. So I'll definitely share with you guys some styled pics here on YouTube and also over on my Instagram account. So make sure to follow me there. It is Lone Fox Home and I'll catch you guys in my next one. Have an amazing rest of your day. Bye guys.